Praxis Prepper. Everybody, this is Praxis. One of the most important things that preppers always try to do is to store things ahead of time. So if you get into a situation where it's difficult to go out into the world and acquire something like food, if grocery stores aren't operating, you can have that stuff already in your possession so that when you need it, you've got it. But one of the most difficult things to achieve when you're trying to store things ahead of time is fresh greens and vegetables. Uh, if you live in an environment where you can only do gardening part of the year, uh, I live in New England and that's certainly the case here, uh, during the winter time, the only way that you you can get fresh greens and vegetables tends to be going to the grocery store. Now, if you were in a situation where going to the grocery store was inadvisable or if the grocery stores just weren't even servicing, uh, you know, people anymore for one reason or another, you know, how are you going to get fresh greens into your diet? Having fresh greens is a really important aspect to health. Now, it's easy to store dried rice, dried beans, and things of that nature, uh, but if you want to get those kind of health benefits of fresh greens and vegetables, how do you do that? Well, the way that I like to do it is with sprouting. Right here, uh, this is a sprouting tower. In fact, this is two sets of sprouting towers, and we're going to talk a little bit about why I have two sets of spreading towers here opposed to just one. But first what I want to do is get rid of this completely irrelevant rifle. It's really only here because I've been told that if I have firearms in my videos it uh, encourages people to have more interest in the videos and otherwise this is just a video about sprouting seeds which is not all that sexy, not all that exciting, but it's super super important and the appeal of it is going to become very uh, apparent to people who, if they were ever in a situation where they couldn't get those kind of fresh greens. I know we're always craving like, uh, I don't want to speak for everyone, but like, uh, you know, sweets, candies, fatty foods, salty foods, you know, uh, in our culture, those are some things that, you know, we've evolved to, uh, you know, sort of crave, you know, from our history, those were substances in nature that were difficult to find, so we've kind of craved those. But, you know, if you go without fresh greens, you know, fresh vegetables for a long time, your body really starts to crave those. And this is a way you can achieve it for yourself, is with sprouting. Now, this is something that I do on an ongoing basis. I don't just wait for an emergency to start sprouting. I uh, use it as part of my everyday normal life. And I want to talk about that uh, with you because uh, it's something that's really easy to add into your, uh, your daily kind of routine. And you always have this fresh... Uh, you know, asset for you to add into, you know, whatever you might be eating that day. Uh, when you buy one of these sprouting uh, kits, sometimes it can be a little bit daunting because the instructions for these oftentimes are a lot more complicated than they need to be. Okay, so here is the instruction manual for kitchen crop. This is the uh, sprouting system that I use. I would highly recommend it. I've used it for many, many years. I love it, absolutely love it. But the instruction manual makes it just seem so complex. I'm not, I'm not even gonna read any of the stuff on the front of it. Let's just jump right in and just get like their rundown of how you can do sprouting. Operating instructions. Read and follow instructions in all sections of the manual before using your sprouter. Do not... Okay, so there's an awful lot there, but you don't need to know all of that stuff. And I'm going to talk about how you can do it in a really simple, easy to remember way. This kind of becomes a routine for your, your individual day. Now, uh, the first step when you're going to be doing sprouting is you take one of these trays here and you put some seeds in it. But before I do that, because I have this ongoing process, I need to do another little step first. And that is to clear some of the stuff that is at the bottom here. Uh, when you put water through these trays, it collects down to the bottom here. Now, because I have two sets of trays, I have this one that collects water, and I have this one that I use as just a temporary place to put this down while I'm getting rid of this water. By getting rid of this water, I mean using it for something else. I love permaculture. I love the idea of whatever is waste from one process becomes useful for another. And this water here is really great for watering your plants. That's probably more water than I would normally put in an aloe plant, but uh, I don't want to be walking all over the house. Every morning when I start some new seeds, first thing I do is take yesterday's water, go around the house and find any dry plants that might need to be watered, and water them. Now that this is empty, I can put this tray right back on top there and put this back here. Now the reason that I don't take this tray and just put it straight down on a table is actually two reasons. One, sometimes the bottom's wet and then you're gonna leave like a ring on your table. The other is uh, the oldest seeds here, uh, oftentimes, and there's a few examples of it right here, oftentimes we'll have roots coming down, extending through there. And if you don't wanna break those roots, uh, nesting it inside one of these trays will you know, make it so the roots don't break. Okay, so now that I have plenty of room to put water in the bottom there, all I gotta do is take one of these uh, trays from the top. I'm gonna get some some sprouting seeds. Now, uh, oftentimes the instructions will say that you know you're supposed to put a certain amount in. Whatever, I just put 
maybe a, I don't know, a tablespoon, something like that. It kind of depends on what you like. You know, a tablespoon would be a good place to start. You can add more if you want more or less if you find like that's too much. I keep my uh, sprouting seeds in the refrigerator, so these would go back in the refrigerator. Now, uh, the next thing that you do is you're going to be putting these on the top and then watering it. But before I do that, what I like to do is take some water and put it on there. I usually do this over the sink and shake it around. And the reason I'm putting some water in there and shaking it around is that uh, sometimes there is a little bit of issue with the surface tension of water and the seeds will just kind of float on the surface and they won't fully wet. So I put a little water in, shake it around, and uh, then I put the rest of the water in. Just like that. Now, when I want to harvest some seeds, that's pretty easy. <laughs> Maybe I should have done it before I started watering. It's a little bit of a race right now. I'm going to take out the bottom tray. These have been going for, I don't know, about a week or so. Put that back down. And now these are ready to use. Now, before I use these, oftentimes there's a lot of water left in the bottom. So what I will do is I will take these seeds and kind of part them. So you have like a little gap right there. And then I'm going to take it and let it drip out a little bit. Now, a great thing that you can do uh, to, to let these things drip out is actually to stick them into another plant. In fact, I have a nice aloe plant right over here that I oftentimes use where you can just nestle this down uh, in with all the leaves and it'll drip uh, into your aloe plant so it doesn't make a mess anywhere else and it's you know simultaneously uh, watering your plants. But other than that, that's pretty much it. I throw the lid back on here and uh, in about one, two, three, four, five, six days, the ones that I just started now are going to be ready to eat. Tomorrow I'll eat these, the day after that I'll eat these. And it's just a really great way of incorporating greens into your diet in a way that's super, super easy. Uh, I know that I, I spoke a lot about the benefits of doing this, but uh, maintaining your sprouts is really as easy as dumping out the water, putting some new sprouts in the top tray, breaking the surface tension, watering it, and eating your sprouts when you're ready to eat them. And these can be used for all sorts of things. I, I will uh, generally take these and just put them into like a salad wrap, uh, you know, wrap in bread, you can put them into a salad. Uh, you could just throw them right into a bowl, put some salad dressing on them, and just eat them just as they are, just like that. So there's all sorts of different ways that you can eat these, or just straight. It's just like, um, it's kind of like just eating a wild edible plant that you find outside except that there's no dirt and bugs on it. So a little less protein content, <laughs> but really fresh. And boy, if you were in a situation where you didn't have access to fresh greens and vegetables, having something like this would just feel like a lifesaver and it might actually be as well. That's it, thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.